In the month of April, I received the highest amount of dividend income ever. So in this video, we're going to be going over exactly how much dividend income I received in April. We're going to be taking a deep dive into my dividend portfolio. And we're also going to be looking at a financial model I created in order to project forward how much dividend income I will be receiving 30 years from now. So let's go ahead and dive into the video. And you can see we are currently looking at my dividend portfolio tracker. If you'd like to be able to download this tracker or my dividend portfolio projection, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. And the first thing Thing we are going to look at is my historical monthly dividend income over time. So I started tracking this dividend portfolio back in February of 2021. And in that month, you can see I received $74. And since then, we had a few low months. You can see only $2 in March, $25 in April. But let's fast forward about a year. You can see February of this year, $70. March of this year, $61, and then this month, April, I had my highest amount of monthly dividend income ever at $133. So if we come over here, we can see my expected yearly dividend income is now sitting at $1,079, nearly $1,080, and that's due to some new positions that I have recently added during this market downturn. Now, the month of April was an extremely hard month for all investors. We can see the S&P 500 was down 10%. Year to date, we are down nearly 14%. But if we're a long-term dividend investor, then we know this really provides a lot of opportunities to buy quality dividend paying companies at better cost. So that's what I've been doing. I've been adding positions like Starbucks and Bank of America into my dividend portfolio along a few other positions. But we can see my all-time dividend income is now sitting at $890. My average monthly dividends is sitting at nearly $90. So my current goal is to get that up to $100 a month. We can see my highest month of dividend income, which is this month, is now $133. My current portfolio dividend yield is sitting at 4.12%. Now, if you go back and look at some of my older portfolio, dividend portfolio updates, you're going to see that it was much higher. I've really been focusing on buying quality dividend growth companies. I think that is the best way to invest for long-term investors. We can now see my total dividend payments over time is sitting at 105. If we come over here and look at this chart, we can see my dividend income by industry. So financials is by far my largest position. This has actually increased even more so after I added a position into Bank of America. I performed a stock valuation and uploaded a video on them. So if you'd like to see a Bank of America stock valuation, you can check out that video on my channel. We can see I have a few other industries that make up pretty large positions. Real estate coming in at my second largest at $166. And then consumer staples also sitting at $166 as well. Now, information technology is also taking up a pretty large portion of my dividend income. That's because I am a huge investor in Microsoft. I love it when it's at the 280 price right now. So I did add shares of Microsoft this past month to my portfolio. We also have some energy, some healthcare positions. We have some ETFs. I'm going to keep um, adding on to my ETF positions as well. Then we have some industrials and some consumer discretionary as well. Now over here on this chart, we can see my yield on cost. You can see I do have some more aggressive positions and some of these positions have actually performed pretty well for me over the past few months. But lately I am gonna to continue to focus on adding more quality and staple dividend growth companies. So you can see I have positions like J&J, &J, uh, KHC, KO, and some of my new positions you can see over here. We have Bank of America, we have Domino's Pizza, we have INTC, and we also have Starbucks. And I have uploaded stock uh, stock analysis on videos on many of these companies, so you can go to my channel and check them out here. And then we can see my expected yearly dividend income on this chart um, for each individual stock. So the stocks that I'm receiving the most dividend income from yearly right now is ACRE. I'm expected to make about $107 from that stock. Over here is my second. We have OHI at $95. That is a REIT. And we can see KO coming in at about $70. MO, that's Altria Group coming in at about $66. And other than that, I have a few other positions that are making up some smaller dividend income, but I am focusing on diversifying this dividend portfolio as well. So let's go ahead and jump over to my portfolio value tab. And here we can see my portfolio value tab. And though, although April was a huge downturn in the market, you can see I actually had a huge, pretty big spike up in my portfolio value. That's because of all the new positions I have been adding to my portfolio. So I really like the opportunities that the current market is providing. So you can see I did add a lot 
of money into my portfolio. I plan on dollar cost averaging into some of my positions either way. So hopefully we will see this chart going up over time pretty consistently, but we can see my current dividend portfolio value is sitting at $27,000, uh, 289. And my dividend portfolio cost is 26,195. Now my percent gain went down quite a bit over this past month. It was as high as 15% earlier this year, but it's now sitting at 8.35%. So that's still pretty good. And we can see my unrealized gains and losses is sitting at $1,093. If we come over here, we can see my value by industry. So information technology is now my biggest position. You can see it takes up 25% of my dividend portfolio. Much of that is Microsoft, but I have also added some shares to Apple as well. We can then see financials is a pretty large position as well, coming in at almost 18%. I then also have some smaller industries here. Then we can see consumer staples sitting at 17.2%, real estate 9.7%. We have cons communication services at 4.4, and then we have ETFs at 15.7. And I'm really looking to start adding some more of my capital into ETFs over the coming months. Over here on this chart, we can see my dollar and percent gain on all of my investments. We can see I by far my best performing investment so far is Coca-Cola. I am up $651 on this investment. All of my other investments seem to be performing fairly well, but I do have a few that are not currently performing very well due to the huge market decline we have seen this past month. Over here, we have a chart where we can see how much capital is taken up by each of these positions. So Microsoft is currently 19% of my entire dividend portfolio. That is a really large amount, but I am a huge believer in this business. I think it's one of the best businesses in the world, and I absolutely love the dividend growth. I'll likely make another stock analysis video on them in the near future. Over here, we can see an ETF is taking up about 11%. That's a Vanguard ETF. I feel pretty confident in the long-term performance of that investment. You can see over here, Coca-Cola is taking up about 10.2% of my portfolio as well. So all three of those positions take up a pretty large amount of my portfolio, but other than that, it's pretty well diversified as you can see by this chart. Now, one of the things that I love about this dividend portfolio tracker is the dividend calendar that I have built into it. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And what this is gonna allow us to do is it's gonna allow us to see exactly what stocks have been paying me dividends and we can see dividend and growth over time and my monthly dividend um, income. So for the month of April, like I said earlier, we're sitting at $133. We can see exactly which stocks have paid that out. We can see ACRE paid out nearly $28 in a single dividend payment. So that's a pretty large dividend payment. We have Goldman Sachs Business Development at $15.71. We have Coca-Cola at $18. We have MAIN at $156. MO, which is Altria Group, at almost $17. We also have Annaly Capital Management at $12.76. We have O at $5.91. PSEC, $4.54. We have Regions at $3.11. QILD, which is not a very large position in my portfolio, but paid out $4.4. Then we have WHF at $7.49. SPY, $2.73. And we have Warner Bros discovery at $12 and two cents. And something that's really cool about this dividend calendar is it allows you to see your dividend growth. So for example, if we come over here and look at my investment into O, I made this investment quite some time ago, but I just created this dividend calendar back in January, but you can see I do reinvest my dividends. So you can see exactly how much this dividend payment is increasing over time. Now it's a monthly dividend. So we can see as I'm reinvesting dividends, we have a two cent increase in my dividend payments, another two cent, and now a four, a four cent increase. So this is gonna allow me to see exactly how fast my dividends are growing over time due to dividend reinvestments. Now, if we jump over to my daily dividend calendar, we can see exactly which days I have received dividends. So it looks like April 1st was a big day at $21, April 4th, $7.49. April 14th, a big day at almost $30. 18th, 611. April 20th, 1674. 26th and 27th, we got paid dividends. And then on April 29th, we got paid $32 in dividend income. So the last thing I want to go over is my dividend portfolio projection. Now, this is a financial model I built this past week to kind of project forward exactly how much dividend income I can expect to receive about 30 years from now. So we have a long time horizon for this dividend portfolio. 
And what I've done is I've created this to where we can easily insert some variables and adjust our portfolio according to our goals. So the first thing I applied was a price growth rate. So I expect the price uh, or the growth rate of my overall portfolio value to increase at at least about 8% over the coming years on average. Now, I then had to apply a starting share price just to create the financial model. It's gonna help me see how many shares I'm gonna accumulate over time. And then I have to apply a contribution amount. So my current goal is $2,000 a month. It's a pretty aggressive goal, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to meet it every month, but that's gonna be the standard I'm gonna go ahead and set for myself. And now for this model, I set it to where you can apply either a monthly contribution or a lump sum. So if you wanted to see how a lump sum would perform over time, you could quickly switch this to lump sum, and you can see that it's listed right here. But I am planning on investing monthly. Now over here, finally, we have a dividend growth rate. So this is the rate we expect our dividend payouts to increase by. And then we have a starting dividend payout per share, which we can see is 4.5, which is the equivalent of 4.5%. So then over here, this is my model that I created. And then over here, we can see our projections. We can see our monthly dividend payout comparison, our total dividend in compar comparison, and our total value comparison. I'm projecting this out for over each quarter and each year. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see I projected this over a 30 year period. And right here, let's go ahead and look at our monthly dividend payout comparison. And so I've projected this out over each quarter. So we can see every four months, or excuse me, every three months, if I were to reinvest dividends and invest at this same rate with these um, variables applied, we can see every four months I would be receiving $86,000, $255 in dividend income after 30 years of reinvesting dividends. Now, if I didn't reinvest my dividends over the same period, we could see that amount would be $33,000. So still a really large amount, but when you reinvest dividends, the compounding effect takes place at such a more rapid rate. Now, the total dividend income I would receive over this time period without reinvesting dividends would be 1.2 million. When I reinvest dividends, it would be almost 2.6 million. And then this is where things really get crazy. The total value without reinvesting dividends would be about $3 million. And when you reinvest dividends, it would be sitting at $7.8 million. So we can see just the power of value dividend investing over time. When the dividends grow and the price of your overall portfolio grows, it can really create a strong compounding effect over time. So that's exactly how much dividend income I made in the month of April. Go ahead and let me know how much dividend income you made in the month of April. If you'd like to be able to download any of the spreadsheets used in this video, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.